Hey there, Caleb Wajik of DIY Video Guy here with a lesson on how to use keyboard shortcuts inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So they're kind of hidden. If you want to go in and customize them at all, you have to go to up the top where it says Final Cut Pro, then go to commands, and then go to customize. So you can import if you've been doing custom sets on some other computer, or you can export if you are leaving one computer going to the other, but to customize them, you go into here, and then you get this huge menu of all the different effects. So you can see that it has them color coded a little bit. So editing ones are blue, effects are red, general marking organization are green, and so on and so forth. But what I like to do is think of, a, think of something specific I want to do. So maybe blade. And right now blade is set to the default of B and then command B will go through one track, blade all will be shift command B and so on and so forth. And so you can type any keyboard shortcut that you want into here or, you know, scroll through and just get some detail on a specific key. You can also say, okay, show me everything that the space bar uses and it'll then show you everything that you can do with the space bar. Show me F and all the different modifier keys and what all those are. So if you use Final Cut all the time, you wanna be using the keyboard as much as possible. So what I would recommend is either every time you click something, go ahead, go into this command editor, see what is available, or just pick a letter, pick Q and say, okay, today I'm gonna to learn Q and all the different modifier keys. Or, you know, thirdly, you could go in and modify and see, okay, S is not used uh, with the command button because it's used for save, but you know, look around and maybe you can add some shortcuts for things that you want to do. So let's say, I, I don't know what all the command buttons do. So command D, command D is duplicate. That's good to know. Command C is copy. Command N is new project. Command I is import media, so on and so forth. So the ones I use all the time, let me uncheck command here, are a to get my select tool, B for my blade tool, T for my trim tool, Z for the zoom function, P for the position tool. So pretty much navigating through this menu right here to those five tools I use all the time. I end up using J, K, and L all the time. K is pause, L is play forward, and then if you hit it again, it'll play at double time, then triple time, quadruple time and J is the opposite for backwards. So J, K, and L I'll use as a shuttle to play back. Q, W, and E are the three ways to bring things down into the timeline. So Q is the same as this button, which puts it down on top and it's connected as a clip. W inserts it into the middle. E actually adds it to the end, it appends it. So I use Q, W, and E all the time, as well as J, K, and L. I will use the numbers to cut and switch to different angles when I'm doing multicam. And those are the main ones I use all the time. A few others are the arrow keys to go a frame to the right, a frame to the left, as well as up and down to jump between clips. You can use shift and arrow keys to jump 10 frames left or 10 frames right, and then I also use the semicolon and apostrophe to jump between edits. So this one will jump back to the most recent edit. This will jump to the next one. And then I use the comma and the period key to nudge things left and right a little bit. So nudge a clip, one to the left, one to the right, and you can hold shift and hit comma or period to nudge 10 right, nudge 10 left. And then I use M for markers all the time. And if you hit it twice or you use the uh, option key, you can add a marker and immediately start to type in it. So that's just a brief overview of some of the ones I use all the time. Like I said, if you're using something in the menus a lot or you're clicking a button, go learn the keyboard shortcut, save yourself some time and energy every time you use it.